Okay, welcome back. So let's do a question for heat transfer where we're looking at radiation. So we discussed convection, conduction, so conduction, convection. Now we're looking at radiation and which is the energy that's radiated and transmitted in form of rays, waves, or particles. So we're typically looking at the electromagnetic scale when we consider ra radiation. But for this FE type question, we're going to be looking at a fairly simple example where we have a surface A, it has a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, surface B is 200 degrees Celsius. The two surfaces are sufficiently close so that all their radiation leaving A is intercepted by B and vice versa. That means all the radiation from B is intercepted by A as well. That's what that means. So we're going to assume black body behavior. We'll talk about that. And the net thermal radiation heat transfer, which is our heat flux between the two surfaces is what? So we want to find the net thermal radiation heat transfer, which is our heat flux. So this is going to be our Q dot. Let's call it Q dot which is the heat flux we want to find. So we're assuming black body behavior and I'm going to refer to the FE handbook and what we can do go to heat transfer I'm using the new FE handbook so for radiation we know this is the general equation that usually applies the radiation emitted by a body is given by the following equation which is our heat flux our Q dot is that emissive, emissivity of the body this depends on the material the sigma is the Boltzmann constant this is fairly you it's used a lot in heat transfer so a lot of people have this memorized if you do that's good as well it'll save you time but this is a very common constant that we're going to use for radiation a is the body surface area T is the absolute temperature in Kelvin Note here that the temperature in Kelvin is raised to the fourth power. Make sure you keep it in Kelvin because we have it raised to the fourth. Do not put degrees Celsius. Make sure you use Kelvin for the temperature. So this is the general equation that usually applies for most bodies. But in this case, we're told we have black body behavior, right? Where is that? Black body behavior. It says here, we're assuming black body behavior. So what we have to do is go back to the handbook and we can go down. So these are the general equation for each form of heat transfer. Now they talk about conduction. They get into specific equations. Now you can keep going down, keep going down. They talk about fins. I think that's discussed often in heat transfer. They talk about convection now, the convection section, which we did an example for internal flow and you can keep going down we want to go to the radiation section okay heat exchangers you have a section for that just note that if you're given a question so now we're looking at radiation this is the section so we know we're going to have types of bodies for any body for any body not a specific body here any body we know our alpha our rho and our tau must equal to one, meaning the absorb, the absorptivity, the re reflectivity, and the transmissivity, which is these. These are the well. I'll just draw a picture because it will make more sense. What we mean by each value there. So let's say I have a surface. And I have some incident radiation coming in. I'll use pink for that. Some incident radiation. This is our incident. Sorry, I can't spell too good. So incident. Incident radiation. So that comes in, okay? So we know based on this body, some is going to get reflected. Some will be transmit it and the rest is going to be absorbed so some will be reflected reflected some will be transmitted this will be transmitted 
and the rest is going to be absorbed. So absorbed, gonna be this, absorbed. And for each one of these, we for the reflected, we use the alpha, okay? For the absorbed, we use the rho, and for the transmitted portion is gonna be tau. That's what we mean from that equation. Depending on the body, that's gonna have different values, and it's gonna differ, but this is for any body, and all of these must equal to one. So now we'll get into specific bodies. For opaque bodies, we know our alpha plus rho must equal to one. For a gray body, now we're looking at something different. Our alpha must equal to our epsilon, which is the emissivity. And for a gray body, the emissivity plus rho must equal to one. So real body bodies are frequently approximated as gray bodies when we consider real bodies. So now for this question, finally, we get to black bodies. So this is defined as one that absorbs all energy incident upon it. It also emits radiation at the maximum rate for a body of a particular size at a particular temperature. So this says our alpha and our epsilon, our emissivity is equal to one. So we have to note that for a black body. And here it talks about the shape factor, which we will discuss. But if you keep going down, we're on 217. Now go to 218. We have a specific equation for two black bodies. This one. This equation is for a body small compared to its surrounding. We're not going to use that, but you might see an example for that. You know you have it here. But for two black bodies, we can use this equation. So the net energy exchanged by radiation between two black bodies that see each other is going to be given by this, the area. We take our view factor, which is our F. So in this case, our view factor will be 1. So the view factor is going to range from 0 to 1. And this is, it depends, it's the fraction of radiation leaving surface 1 that strikes surface J. So it's one because if we look at the question, we're going to assume the black body behavior and we know that all the radiation leaving A is intercepted by B. So that tells us we have a view factor of one. And it says vice versa. That means all the radiation leaving B is, tra is intercepted by A. So we have a view factor of one. All of it. So we have one. It ranges from zero to one, that view factor. So it's going to be one, and it discusses it here in specific details for the view factor, which is our shape factor. That's another word they use for it. So we're going to use this equation. Our, and we know the temperatures, we know the sigma, it's the Boltzmann constant. So we know we're going to use this equation, so I'm going to have it in the notebook. And we know one important thing that that's missing in this equation is our emissivity. So the notebook didn't write it down because it's going to be one for a black body. We know it's automatically one, but it's always considered when we're looking at radiation. So the emissivity value is one because it says it here, right, for a black body. So it's one. So they do not write it in the equation, but know that it's always going to be there for each equation, just like what we have here for this example, when you have a body that's small compared to its surrounding. So we're going to use this equation and let's go back to our notebook. We know our Q dot is going to equal to our emissivity value, which is one. And we know the area here is not given. If the area is not given, just ignore that portion and assume one. So here the area is not given. The two surfaces are close. So it's not given. Just assume this is also one if the area is not given if it was given the area of one body so we have two bodies we have another body these are close to each other they're both black bodies right and we know our emissivity is one but if the area was given you would denote the area let's say this is body one this is body two so that's important if the area is given so in this case, we will say the area is 1. The view factor is going to be 1. 
and we discussed that then we have our sigma which is our Boltzmann constant where is that it's going to be 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 right so 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 and it has units of the watt I believe it's watt per meter squared Kelvin to the force watt per meter squared Kelvin to the force note here everything is in Kelvin and now we take T1 minus T2 and both of these are raised to the force power so we do T1 is gonna be the temperature of the first body so the temperature of that body is gonna be 100 degrees Celsius so we have to add 273 right so 100 degrees Celsius plus 273 gives us the temperature in Kelvin and this is raised to the fourth power do not forget to raise that to the fourth power and for the second body our body 2 is gonna be surface B right we take 200 degrees Celsius plus 273 so 200 degrees Celsius plus 273 to convert it to Kelvin and this is raised to the fourth power I believe we plugged everything in Kelvin is good don't for make sure you have your units in Kelvin you can solve for Q dot and if I did my math correctly I got around 1740.56 watt per meter squared so this is our answer and if we look at our answer choices it's gonna be a yes and I think that's all hope that helps